Hello everybody. In my past couple of videos, you've heard me talk about how to get an AMP, the requirements to get an AMP, and what you can do to become an AMP. In this video, I'm going to give you three to four things that you can expect from going to a FAR Part 147 school. Stick around. Okay, the first thing, what is a FAR Part 147 school? Well, if you go to the Code of Federal Regulations, like, for example, DOT has federal regulations. OSHA has federal regulations. Well, Title 14 is the FARS, or the Federal Aviation Regulations. So if you go to the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 14, Part 147, you will find the requirements for an airframe and power plant school, which is what I teach at. Now, I'm not going to say the name of the school that I teach at, not for any sort of legal reason, not because I'm actually worried about it, but because I'm not a representative of the school. My opinions are not a representative of the school, so I would rather just not say their name and not have to deal with any of that headache. But I can say for the most part, they do all run the same. So some of the things you can expect. Your 147 programs have all moved over at this point to the Airman Certification Standards. They were on the PTS or the Practical Test Standards, which required 1,900 hours of classroom and lab time. That requirement is now gone and under the Airman Certification Standards, you're now required to show competency. What competency means is I have to give my students a task. Now the task could be anything. For example, research the Federal Aviation Regulations and I give them that task and then they have to research a federal aviation regulation and give me the information from that regulation. It could be troubleshoot an engine starter and they have to troubleshoot the starter and fix it. So everything is now competency based. Most of your programs, most of your schools are still going to require that you attend a certain amount. For us, you cannot miss more than 12 and a half percent without being dropped from any given class. So how the classes work. The whole program typically lasts 19 to 20 months, depending on where you're at, and the classes teach out in blocks. So your first class would be aviation science in the morning for four hours a day until the class is finished, and FARS in the afternoon for four hours a day until the class is finished. Now classes are typically 48 hours, 96 hours, 112 hours, or 128 hours. They're divisible by 12, the shortest being 48 hours, which comes out to about 12 days. So FARS actually got lengthened for us under the ACS, so it's no longer 48 hours. It's now, I want to say, 60 hours. I want to say it's a 60-hour course, so it would take longer than 12 days. But you're only allowed to miss 12.5% of that class. So for example, a class like Weight and Balance, which is 48 hours, 48 contact hours, or 12 days, if you missed a day and a half of class, you're already really close to that 12.5% threshold and eligible to be dropped. So I do tell people um, it's really difficult to work a full-time job and go to class for eight hours a day, because you do. You come from 7.30 in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon, you have 30 minutes for lunch, and a break about an hour and a half into the first class. So. It's a full-time job just being in school, and most of my students are there full-time all day, every day. You will start with generals. You'll go through all of your general courses, and then if you keep on track with the program, you'll go through all of your airframe courses, at which point you are eligible to test for an airframe certificate. Then, somewhere typically in the middle of the summer semester, you will start your power plant classes, and you will go through and finish the rest of your power plant classes, at which point you are eligible to test for your power plant certificate. Now, one of the things my students get confused on is they think as soon as they finish with their airframe class, they can go test. You have to wait until your certificate of completion comes back from the administration. At least in our case, I can't speak for any other uh, 147 schools out there. Okay, but once you've completed all your classes and you have final grades for all of your classes, we submit a transcript of those final grades. They go up through the, the program coordinator and the chairs and, and whatnot, and everybody has to sign it. And then you get a certificate back that says you have completed the program. You then use that certificate, never lose it. You then use that certificate to fill out all of your paperwork for IACRA and PSI, which I covered in my last video. 
You then use that certificate and certificate number to fill out that thing and schedule your written test. After your written test, you take your O and P test. Of course, I already did a video on the testing process and what test you have to take in which order. You do not have to take your A airframe and power plant certificate together. You can take just your airframe certificate and you can take just your power plant certificate, but you will have to take the general courses with that. Some of your 147 schools, like the one that I teach at, do offer night classes, but they run five hours a day from five in the afternoon to 10 o'clock at night, four days a week. But they only teach one. So the whole night program takes three years as opposed to a A&P full time during the day will only take 19 months. Now, what you can expect from workload and information. The programs, all of them, it doesn't matter where you go, the programs come at you really, really fast. There is a whole lot of information very quickly and it never slows down. If you've got some mechanical experience, if you've been in aviation in the past, you're gonna have a leg up. If you're starting from scratch, you're still welcome in the program because we'll take you from not understanding anything about mechanics, not understanding anything about aviation, and giving you a solid foundation to build experience on later. But you start with Federal Aviation Regulations and Aviation Science, and you go from there and you just start building very, 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 very quickly. It is behoove of you to show up to class on time, not to be late, to study and put the work in. If you put the work in, if you study, it's, I'm not gonna say it's easy. It's not easy. It's definitely very hard. But if you study and you put the work in, you will be successful. I've had students who, you know, they don't have a lot of, I don't wanna say confidence, that's not the right word. But I have a students, they're not really sure. They've never worked on anything in the past. They've never been a mechanic. Nobody in their family is a mechanic. And they're now airframe and power plant certificated mechanics out there in the field, working at places, making good money and continuing to learn as a mechanic. Which brings me to my last and final point. We are not going to teach you everything that you could possibly ever know or need to know for a successful career in aviation. There's just not enough time in 19 months to do that. But our hope is that we can build a really solid foundation for you to go out into industry and continue to get training, continue to learn, whether it's OJT or if you go to training, continue to learn and continue to build from that. So I hope this was helpful. If you're thinking about going to a 147 school, I would certainly recommend it. It's what I did immediately out of high school. I graduated high school. I took out some student loans. I went to a 147 school. I knocked it all out, got my test, got my AMP. It was the best decision I've ever made. If you're considering going to a 147 school, I would do it. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment below, leave us a like, subscribe, all that jazz. And as always, be easy.